If a crane countdown timer for Elementor is an effective tool for anyone who wants to build excitement before something is about to happen. For instance, maybe you have a launch coming and you want to create excitement in your audience. Or perhaps you are running a special offer that expires soon and you want people to take action. This video looks at how you can configure the Evergreen countdown timer on Elementor Pro. I'll go through all the important settings so that you can configure this element the way you want. So without any further ado, let's hop into the demonstration. To get started with our countdown demonstration, let's create a template that we can then play with. So here on the left, go to templates and click add new. And then in choose template type uh, model window, click on this drop down and choose page as your template type. And then you can also enter a name for your template. So let me just call it timer to keep things simple. And then click create template. And then what will happen next is that once Elementor is ready, like this, we will have to configure this design area a little bit. So I want to get rid of all these distractions that what you will see here, uh, the header and the sidebar. So in order to do that, click on the settings icon at the bottom left, this gear icon here, and then as your page layout, choose Elementor Canvas. And as you can then see that this whole design area changes and there is much less distractions. So it looks much better this way. And the next step is to track the countdown timer element into this design area. So let's scroll down a little bit. And here you can find the countdown element. So just drag and drop this into the design area. And now we have a default timer that we can then play with. Right, so first let's change the timer type from due date to evergreen timer. And as you can see that Elementor provides two types of timers, but in this demonstration we are only going to focus on the evergreen timer. So choose that as your value in the type dropdown. So click on the evergreen timer and you are now using the evergreen timer. So you may be wondering what does it do? What's an evergreen timer? Well, the idea is that all the visitors get the same time range regardless when they visit the website. So let me change the timer a little bit so that it's easier to explain how this thing works. So let me change the hours value a little bit like this. And here is how this whole thing works. So when I visit a website, uh, it says that I have 23 hours and 58 minutes and some seconds left before this whole thing expires. And then when you visit this website, let's say tomorrow, your timer also starts from 23 hours and 59 minutes and some seconds. So. What you will see in your timer and what I will see in my timer can be different. And the time frame for us, for both of us, is the same. It's still roughly the 20, 24 hours. But the timer, what you will see, is different. For instance, compared to what your friend will see or what I will see. So it's a uh, a personalized type of timer, meaning that everyone sees a different timing value here, but the time frame is still the same. So it starts from 23 hours and 59 minutes and 59 seconds. Here's another exciting feature of this type of a timer. When I leave a website and it says that I have 23 hours and 57 minutes left before the expiration. And then I come back to this website, let's say 
two weeks later, I still have that 23 hours and 57 minutes left. And this whole thing works because Elementor stores a cookie on your computer. So when you are leaving this website with an evergreen timer, Elementor stores a cookie with the current value in your timer. And when you come back to this website, it knows that, hey, this person has this amount of hours and minutes and seconds left before the timer expires. So that's basically how this whole thing works. Now that you know what this evergreen timer is all about, let's go through all the important settings that you can tweak so that you can modify this timer to meet your needs. So, first of all, you have hours and minutes, and this basically defines the starting point for your timer. So, by default, you have 47 hours and 59 minutes, but then with these arrows pointing up and down, you can change the value, or you can enter any value you wish into these form fields. So, for instance, now it says that I have one day and 23 hours and something else left on this timer. So if I change the hours part, let's say to 23, you will then notice that the days part is now zero and the timer starts from 23 hours and 59 seconds. You can also uh, define the view for your timer. So uh, the block view is here by default, but then you can change this to inline and it changes the outlook a little bit. But uh, I have only used the block level view in my own experiments, so it seems to seems to be the best fit uh, in this scenario and maybe in your scenario as well. It makes this whole timer to look much nicer than the inline part. Then you can define which parts of the timer you want to display. So by default, uh, days, hours, minutes and seconds are displayed. But then you can uh, enable and disable these parts by toggling this selection on and off. Uh, and by default, as you can see, all the values have the show here. So it means that they are displayed, but then you can just turn these things on and off and as you can see that it reflects these changes to your current timer like this but let me turn these values back on then you can decide if you want to show the label and by label we are talking about these texts days hours minutes and seconds so you can then turn these things on and off if you want to and it looks like this when uh, the labels are turned off but i think that it looks nicer when you keep this setting on you can also decide or define actually uh, if you want to create any custom labels uh, so if you toggle this uh, setting on and then you can define all of these different label texts for your timer. Finally, you have this actions after expire. And what this uh, configuration does is that you can define what will happen when you reach uh, zeros in your uh, counter, meaning when your counter expires. And you have three different actions. You can use the redirect value to redirect the visitor to another URL. Or you can just plain hide this timer when the time expires. And finally, you can show a message. So once the timer expires, you can show the visitor a message. So these are the main settings under the content tab in your countdown uh, evergreen timer now let's talk a little bit about the styling which is also very important so let's continue with that part next 
So when you hop into the style tab, uh, you have the boxes section and the container width. And first of all, you see this icon and when you hover your mouse over it, it says desktop. So you will see this type of an icon elsewhere in Elementor as well. For instance, here in space between. But anyways, when you click on this icon, uh, you will see a menu and then you can switch between devices. So by, by default, you have the desktop view, which looks like this. But if you choose, for instance, the tablet view, uh, let me click on that one. Uh, it shows me how this current design looks in a tablet view. And I can also check the mobile view. And when I choose that one, uh, my design looks like this. So it's a very handy way of checking how your design looks in different devices. But let me choose the desktop uh, setting back here because it was here by default. So we will continue with that one. Uh, you can also decide how wide your container, uh, how wide this whole element is. So I can track this slider from left to right and then you can see that your layout changes. So it's a very handy way of uh, checking the perfect width for your elements and as you can see that everything changes in real time. You can also switch between units so by default you have percentages but you can switch it to pixels if you want to. So that's basically what this part means. Uh, you then have a background color which means that you can change the background color of your element. Uh, you have two options. First, if you click on the globe icon or the primary, a uh, new menu appears and here you can define global colors, uh, the colors that you can use throughout your designs. So if you want to use these global colors and if you want to define them, just click on the gear icon and a new menu appears and you can then uh, add new colors if needed. So that's basically how you work with the global colors setting. Now let me just close this part here and we can then continue with this other color option. So when you click on this particular color, uh, you have the color picker tool and you can freely pick the color you want to. Uh, alternatively, if you have a hexadecimal code, you can enter that code into this form field. So that's a very handy way of changing uh, the outlook of your uh, evergreen countdown timer and especially the background color. So let me just drag this a little bit so you will see how this works. The next thing is the border type. So by default, you do not have any borders here and it says none in this drop down. But when you click on this menu or this drop down menu, you can then choose between different values um, and let's choose the dotted value here and actually nothing happens but Elementor reveals more options that you can define. Uh, so here when you click any of these uh, fields here top right bottom left and when you enter a value, you can either enter a value through your keyboard or click these arrows uh, pointing up and down either way. So when you do that, uh, you will see that you now have a border and it has the same width in top right, bottom and left. And the reason why it behaves like this, why does it enter the same value is because these border values are linked together. So if you change any of these values, all of them are changing at the same time. But if you want to unlink these values, meaning that you can enter distinctive values into these form fields, so, so just click on this link icon and currently it is gray it shows you that these values are linked but if you click on this 
you will see that the background turns into white and then you can enter your own preferred values. For instance, if I set value 10 into the left, so it looks like this. So now the left border is thicker than the rest of these borders. And you also have the color picker tools or the global colors and it works exactly the same way as what I showed you in here in the background color section. You can also define the border radius and it works the same way as the width. So you can either have the same values if this linked option is on or then you can unlink these values if needed. But let me just enter something so you will see how it looks like. Let's enter 5 and you now have these rounded borders. Uh, you can also decide the space between the uh, counter elements. Uh, so if I track the slider so you will see in real time how it looks. So currently if I have the value let's say 30 it looks like this. But anyways the idea is the same as in container width so you will see all your changes in real time. Uh, you can also decide on the padding. Uh, once again everything is linked together but this whole idea is to set uh, a spacing between your content and your border. So it works exactly the same way as the border radius or the width. You can unlink these values or keep them linked and change the uh, units and uh, uh, that's basically how this part works. You will also have the content section and it basically gives you more options to format your countdown timer. So for instance you can change the color of your digits uh, typography and you have the coloring options these are familiar to you already. Um, you can also change the label colors meaning these text that you see here, uh, their fonts and also you can change the text stroke. Uh, there is also something that you do not see here and when I go back to the content tab and here in actions after expire, if I click on this plus sign and choose show message. So you may remember that it means that when this timer expires, uh, a visitor sees a message. But once you have entered your message, you can then style it even further. So when you go back to the style tab, and here you can then see this new section called message. And this is the place where you format your message. So you have the alignment options, you have the text color, the font, the padding. So that's basically how this message section works. Okay, so we have now gone through the Evergreen countdown timer and how it works. Um, I really hope that you found this video useful, so make sure to like it and also make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and I will get back to you with another video very soon. Bye bye.